Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at phase transitions, um, some of the vocabulary associated with phase transitions, and also some of the thermodynamics of phase transitions. For our objectives, we want to properly use various terms related to phase transitions and also be able to identify the sign of the enthalpy change for each type of phase change. Just as a real quick review for a solid versus a liquid versus a gas, in the solid phase, um, you have all of the atoms in fixed positions, and they can vibrate a little bit around those fixed positions, but they pretty much stay at home. The molecules are very close to one another. As the sample warms up and starts getting more and more thermal energy, the particles start to vibrate more and more wildly until they finally start to move past each other. When that happens, we call it melting. And so when that happens, we have um, added enough energy um, to uh, turn the um, the solid into a liquid. I'm using Q there to stand for heat. Um, as the in, in, in order to have this phase transition from the solid to the liquid, we had to overcome the intermolecular forces that held the molecules in their particular places. We still have a lot of intermolecular forces, though, because the liquid molecules are still very close to one another. But if we keep heating the liquid enough, so we add enough heat, um, it will turn into a gas. This takes a lot more energy because we have to overcome all of the intermolecular forces to separate the particles and send them off into the gas phase. Let's take a look at the thermodynamics of phase changes. If you'll remember from Gen Chem 1, state functions are thermodynamic properties that only depend on where you start and where you end. It doesn't matter how you get from the beginning to the end. They're path independent. Um, two of these state functions are enthalpy and entropy. So enthalpy is the thing that we looked at in Gen Chem 1 and changes in enthalpy or delta H's. Entropy is something that you'll look at this semester towards the end of the semester and it's abbreviated with an S and we'll, we would talk about a delta S uh, for the change in entropy of one of these um, phase changes. Um, to help get the signs right when we think about the energy changes associated with uh, these different um, phase changes, um, let's look at this energy level diagram. The lowest level down here indicates the solid phase. The level that's kind of in the middle indicates the liquid phase, and the level up top, which is at the highest enthalpy level or entropy level, um, would indicate the gas phase. So if you take a solid and you turn it into a liquid by adding energy, we call that process melting or sometimes fusion, uh, particularly in the field of thermodynamics, melting gets called fusion a lot. And you'll see that in this chapter a little bit. Um, in order to make that fusion happen, we've got to put energy into our solid. Anytime you put energy into something, it's an endothermic process. So the delta H of turning a solid into a liquid will be positive. We have to put energy into it. If we're going to vaporize a liquid or turn the liquid into a gas, we have to put energy into it. And so that makes it an endothermic process. If we reverse these processes and we take a gas and we turn it into a liquid, we're going to call that condensation. And if we take that liquid and, and remove more energy and turn that into a solid, we call that freezing. Condensation and freezing both involve removing thermal energy from the sample. So is that thermal energy leaves, we call that an exothermic process. And the sign of delta H is negative. Those aren't the only possible phase transitions. We can have the solid go directly to the gas phase, which is known as sublimation. And again, for the solid to turn into a gas, we have to put energy into it. So that is endothermic. And if that gas goes directly to being a solid without going into a liquid, we call that 
deposition. As the gas turns into the solid, it has to give away a bunch of energy. So as it releases that energy, um, we call that exothermic. And the sign associated with that delta H is negative. Um, the exact same sign changes are associated with entropy. So at the end of the semester, after we've covered entropy and you're looking at phase changes and the sign of delta S, this diagram will get you the right answer for delta S's as well as for delta G's if we're just looking at the signs. When water boils, what are the bubbles composed of? Pause this video and take a minute to think about that. Okay, so these bubbles that form, well, when boiling takes place, a liquid is turning into a gas, and it's the same chemical all of the way. So when we're talking about boiling, we're talking about H2O in the liquid phase turning into H2O in the gas phase. It's a physical change. The identity of the substance remains the same. And so those bubbles that you see there are composed of water. So the best answer here is D, water. Why is the delta H of vaporization so much bigger than the delta H of fusion? Okay, so if we're going to look at an enthalpy level diagram uh, where bigger enthalpies are higher on the scale, the solid form is our lowest energy form, uh, the liquid is above that, and then the gas phase is the absolute highest level. Okay, so if we're talking vaporization, we are talking about um, the liquid turning into the gas. And if we are talking, whoops, I should have extended that arrow all the way up. If we are talking about fusion, we are talking about the solid turning into the liquid. And if you I look up actual numbers for various substances, this uh, delta H of vaporization is usually significantly bigger than the delta H of fusion. Let's think about this for a minute. When a substance melts or undergoes fusion, the, you, you have to put in enough energy to overcome some of the intermolecular forces so that the particles can roam about. But they still stay very close to each other, and so the majority of the intermolecular forces are still in play because the particles are very close. When a liquid vaporizes, we have to completely separate the particles from, from one another, which means you have to completely overcome all of the intermolecular forces. And so that makes the delta H of vaporization bigger than the delta H of fusion, because with delta H of fusion, we're just counteracting a little bit of the intermolecular forces, whereas with delta H of vaporization, we're having to overcome all of them. In our last example, Millie Mole is trying to identify an unknown substance by measuring its properties. She has found that the heat of sublimation is 52 kilojoules per mole, and the heat of fusion is 8 kilojoules per mole. What is the value of the heat of vaporization? Okay, so let's again look at our energy level diagram or enthalpy diagram for phase changes. The solid is at the lowest level. The liquid is above that, and then the gas is quite a bit above that. Now, when we're talking sublimation, which we know the delta H of sublimation is 52 kilojoules per mole, sublimation means that the solid turns into a gas. So we know that that change right there is 52 kilojoules per mole. Now, we're also told that the heat of fusion is 8 kilojoules per mole. Heat of fusion means the solid turns into a liquid. So that increment right there is 8 kilojoules per mole. So we're asked to find the heat of vaporization, which would be for the liquid to turn into the gas. So that would be delta H of vaporization. Well, 
These are all state functions. If we start at a solid and end up at a gas, it always takes the it always has the same delta H. It doesn't matter whether we do it in one step, which we call sublimation, or in two steps, which is fusion followed by vaporization. So I didn't leave myself much room. I'm going to come up to the top to, to figure this out. Um, the delta H of sublimation has to equal the delta H of fusion plus delta H of vaporization. That's just using the properties of state functions and reading them off of this enthalpy level diagram. We know the delta H of sublimation is 52. We know the delta H of fusion is 8. And then we need to solve for the delta H of vaporization. If I subtract 8 from those sides, I have, uh, let's see, 44 is equal to delta H of vaporization. And the units on that were kilojoules per mole, but I didn't leave myself enough room to write them in. So there we go, 44 kilojoules per mole. Our objectives were to list and define terms related to phase changes. So that's a whole bunch of vocabulary words. There's six different phase changes, and one of them has two names, fusion and melting. So make sure you know all of those terms and um, then identify the sign of the enthalpy change for each phase change. You'll always get this one right if you draw a solid at the bottom, liquid above that, and then gas quite a bit higher than that. And then since this is an enthalpy diagram, the higher you are on the scale, the bigger your enthalpy. And so if you move up, delta H is positive, and if you move down in this enthalpy diagram, delta H is negative. And as we'll learn at the end of the semester, uh, entropy behaves the same way as well.